This is clearly my best look at the stork to this point. Well, not just that, it's finally out of, out of the vegetation with the light. Every other time I've seen it, it's, um, it's either been covered by vegetation or, and or the light has been bad. And this light is good. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't say it's perfect and the distance is long, but. I doubt it. There is quite a bit of heat shimmer. So everybody, I'm looking at the wood stork right now. This is the best view I've had to this point. Uh, finally, it's out from behind vegetation and the lighting is decent. I've seen it out from behind vegetation, but only when it's been dark. And when the light has been good, it's really been, you know, obscured by that vegetation, but this is actually not bad, but it's very distant. So again, this, um, I've said it before, but not in this uh, particular video, this wood stork is considered a very rare bird for New York State. And we're here looking over the Knox Marcellus Marsh in Montezuma, New York. There's a rosia spoonbill here as well. I've seen it already. I'm not sure where it is at this moment. with the, the haze. Maybe a little bit. Try to lock things down a bit. Hello there. Since I've arrived, it's only been there, and it's just, obviously, it's preening. But this is, like I said, far and away the best view I've had of it to this point. Still, the distances are long, so, I mean, the image is not perfect. I think it's time to look around a little bit. Let's see if we can find the spoonbill, maybe. This 
So again, uh, there's also a roseate spoonbill, another rarity, which I've seen, you know, on a few occasions now, especially like a week ago today. Uh, saw it here and just, you know, spending just essentially the entire evening feeding. And uh, it's in the water, or at least it was earlier when I, uh, when I arrived. And I'm not sure where it is at this moment. There are some sandhill cranes here. I'm hearing one or two right now. Is that the spoonbill there? I believe so. Let's try to get a look at it. It's the pink bird, if you didn't know. Again, another rarity for New York State. Not a very deep pink, uh, and you know, part of that may be because of the distance and also that it's a juvenile. But you can see, obviously, and especially in comparison to the great egrets behind it, how uh, that pink sh does show through. Oops, didn't want to move like that. Smaller than the great egrets, obviously, also. Beautiful bird. The sun is fairly bright, but it's late in the day. to my knowledge, there may also be some black-bellied whistling ducks here today, but I'm not sure. None, I don't believe any have been reported, or at least last I checked, none today reported, but it doesn't mean that they're not here. It means that maybe no one has seen them. Let's go back to the stork. Lighting is far from perfect given this distance, but that does look like a black crown night heron. And so does that one. That one looks like an adult. That one down below may be a juvenile.
Oh, hello there. How are you? See if I can. Someone near me thinks that she may have seen the uh, whistling ducks. Just realized that the stork is now moving a bit and feeding. Good to see it next to a great blue heron, just for size comparison. Lighting is good, but not not perfect. And I'm looking over a long distance, so it's hard to even adjust adjust things. And it's beautiful, just beautiful. It's the best look I've had. And I'm not streaming, but maybe I should get set up to do so. I think I will. Oh, in a moment. Don't want to miss too much feeding activity. Breeze is picking up just a bit. Oh, there he is. Or it is, I should say. Got to adjust my scope again. Okay, everybody, welcome to East Road. We're looking at a wood stork, a rarity for the area. Hoping that you're all tuned in. I didn't expect to do this tonight. Sorry about the shakiness, but we're looking over it. Long magnification, long distances tonight, and the breeze has just picked up. I'm gonna darken it just a bit, maybe get some of that haze out. So tonight I've seen, just so you know everybody, I've seen, we're watching a wood stork right now, a rarity for New York State. And there's a Rosie at Spoonville here as well, and we'll try to find that and connect with that uh, shortly. This is, I've seen the stork a couple of times already on prior dates. Oh, there's a, behind it, there's a Black Crown Night Heron. Just gonna have a short tour tonight. I don't even know if anyone's tuned in. Everybody. Sure, sure.
Sorry about the shakiness, everybody. That's a result of the magnification and the, and the breeze. So anyway, if you're just tuning in, we're watching a watching a wood stork. It's a funny sounding jet. the spoonbill is at the moment. So we have, right now we have the wood stork in view and there's a black crown night heron at center and then great blue heron right there. We also have many other birds. There are great egrets, like didn't capture that. as well as I would have liked. I'm not on my usual tripod. I'm going to try to find the spoonbill if I can. We also have um, Sandhill cranes here tonight, and Canada geese, mallards. No one has seen yet tonight uh, any black-bellied whistling ducks, so we're, I don't believe anyone has seen them, or at least no one has said anything. And people have been looking, so I certainly haven't seen them. Let's look around a little bit. Uh, various shorebirds, including, I'm not sure if it's greater or lesser yellow legs or both. I have seen the spoonbill, the rosiest spoonbill, earlier, but I just, I don't know where it is at the moment. Numerous shorebirds. There's some cranes right now. Earlier they were in flight, they were just beautiful, the cranes. Now we're dealing with long distances and sunshine, but it's late day sunshine, so it's not quite as bad as that punishing light where we often have when we're here. Uh, earlier in the day. Okay, so where is the spoonbill? I'm not sure. I haven't seen it in a little while. I uh, haven't seen it since I started up the broadcast. Oops. Looking around now and dealing with things. This is in many ways how it was last Wednesday. Lots of activity, lots of, lots of variety. You 
You heard the sandhill cranes just now. Now, last Wednesday I did see the stork, but it was, as I had explained on Saturday, it was getting dark by then, and the views were not good. I was just glad to see it, and I reported that it was, you know, that it was here. I reported it to eBird, and since then it's been seen many times by many people. But it had been like, a, I think, a couple days, or certainly at least more than 24 hours before that. Uh, that the you know the prior report had been made. I'm not sure where the store there is. So you know from a distance it's and with the naked eye certainly it's just another well actually I can hardly see it with the naked eye but um, you know with binoculars it's uh, maybe another egret. I mean. You, but we can see, obviously, it has a dark head and uh, a longer bill, but those are difficult to see at these distances. Long, and I'm comparing it, I'm sorry, to the great egrets. So I'm still trying to look around and see if I can find the, uh, the roseate spoonbill which is also uh, actually relatively difficult to find because in this light, at these distances, well, really it's the distances, the, uh, the pink washes right out and it's, it's harder to discern. Now, uh, it's not always obvious, you know, at least not from here, that the edges of, of the stork's wings, uh, again, it's a wood stork, uh, have black coloration, or at least very dark. I'm not sure if it's black or not, to be honest with you, but very dark coloration. And, um, you know, but like right now, you can see a little bit of that black, but very often, and especially from a distance, it just looks like it's essentially a white bird. Song Sparrow. You know, we've been to East Road, Knox Marcellus, uh, many times, and you know the distances involved if you've been on the tour with us before. I apologize, these are not the very best views, but I mean, that's, that's a function of the distance.
There are also wood ducks here, and I mentioned mallards. I'm not sure what other ducks might be here. I'm not sure who those ducks are right there, for instance. It's hard for me to tell. Uh, you might be able to tell, but I'm having a hard time. Somehow they look like wood ducks to me, but I'm not, I really am not sure. Looks like another black crown night heron and another one. Um, I'll tell you, I, the, I, you know, here, we were here on Saturday and we didn't, I don't know if we saw any black crown night herons. We might have seen one maybe. But uh, last week and, and the week before, and they've been really here quite a bit at, in the evenings. Oh, there it is. Hiding in plain sight. No, I don't see it. It's in front of the egrets and mallards there. Okay, everybody, so we're, we're looking at a, a roseate spoonbill at the moment. And behind it, there are great egrets, a few great herons, and I'm going to make an adjustment here. Mallards. See that against the, uh, com in comparison to the great egrets, that pink does stand out, but this is a juvenile. So my understanding is they're not quite as deep a pink as the adults would be. And if you're just joining us, we've also been watching extensively a wood stork. And we've even seen a, quiff, a cliff swallow. Although, I didn't show it to you. Sorry.
can see the spoonbill is a fair amount smaller overall, uh, and the legs are certainly shorter than those of the great egrets. Oops, sorry. Mosquitoes are coming at me. That heron seems particularly dark, but I think it's great blue heron. Just seems a little darker than maybe it's the lighting. It seems darker than usual. Hearing purple martins, I believe. There's a spoonbill. All right, I think we're winding down, Robin. Okay. Whatever. So you see, in the foreground, there's a great blue heron, and we have the stork that we're looking primarily at, and then there's a looks like a young black crown night heron there in the path of of the stork assuming the and I think that may have been a another one that flew through many um, some geese coming in Canada geese um, many uh, many swallows of various sorts are here tonight I believe I've heard a, also a uh, Purple Martin or two. Oh, I just heard uh, Sandhill Cranes. Uh, I don't know, I've shown you some of the cranes, I believe. Unfortunately, there's that machinery in the distance. I don't know if it's farming equipment or something. Making noise, but it would be, otherwise it would be pretty peaceful here. You can see there's a, a black crown night heron up above the stork and to the left a little bit. And of course there's a great blue heron. Still hearing the Caspian terns vocalize and uh, closer to home we're hearing the uh, some of the various uh, swallows. Oop. I, you know, I have no, no problem with that, but that's not my thing, only because I don't know the shorebirds that well, and, you know, I was hoping to, to see the, the spoonbill and, and see the, uh, the wood stork, and we've, we've seen both tonight, so I feel good about that, uh, So as I said, and as you can see, there are several sandhill cranes here tonight. Just looking over at all the, the great egrets that are here. Maybe we'll catch sight again of the uh, of the spoonbill. I'm uh, this battery happens to be running low, so I think uh, you know if and when it it goes out. We're going to close up no matter what. Not sure where the spoonbill is.
I may have passed right over it because, you know, as, it's, as it gets dark, I mean, it's harder and harder to distinguish it uh, from, you know, maybe from the egrets. But as I'm passing through these areas, you can see we have great egrets, we have great poherons, we've we've seen the sandhill cranes, a lot of those birds of that general form factor, you know, the longer neck and leading down to a body and maybe some long legs. I'm hearing a sound from down there. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, I think I'm hearing a lot of, of swallows. I don't know if they're just flying above me or if I'm, where I'm hearing them from. There's the stork. Look at all those, those black crowned night herons. I mean, they've been all over the place tonight. Some have taken off, some I thought were going to fly in, so I don't know what's going on. Oh, I see it. The, see, the, the roseate spoonbill is there uh, behind those great egrets. This has been just a pleasure. I've, been, I've enjoyed this very, very much. I, I'm not identifying all these shorebirds, sorry, but uh, just to see all this bird activity. It's peaceful here tonight, other than that machinery in the distance. Lots of birds here, nice variety. It's really wonderful. I mean, we, just for, maybe it's our timing, you know, my fault, I guess. Uh, I do accept responsibility, but we don't usually see this kind of activity when we're here, you know, maybe on a Saturday, for instance. So we'll say good night to the store of the roseate spoonbill. Good night, spoonbill. We of course wish well all the birds good luck, but we certainly wish good luck to the ones that are visitors from well out of the area, such as the roseate spoonbill and the wood stork. See if we can find the stork again. I'm um, hearing, oh, in the air. Hold on. Don't know if I can show you or not, but it's not showing you well, but many uh, swallows in the air. Not in, in a concentrated flock or anything, or, but, uh, you know, just in flight scattered throughout my view of, this, of the sky. And there's the stork again, the wood stork. Again, another, another visitor from well out of the area. Really shouldn't be up here in New York State. Starting to get really dark